CataractCoach.com, dense brunettes and cataract technique. Look at that dense cataract. This is going to require a bit more ultrasound energy. So here's the case. We'll put the tripan blue dye in, and while that's working, let's show you the pre-op pictures. Here it is. This eye, you can see, is the left eye with a very dense brunette and cataract. Look at that brownish color there. It's turning the color of Coca-Cola. Not quite root beer just yet. Here, looking at both eyes together, you see the right eye has a moderate cataract. The left eye has a severe cataract. Now, a patient has no history of trauma, just kind of some bad luck, and the patient's delayed surgery due to fear. So here, going back to the case, now you know what it looks like. And again, this is that patient's left eye. Got a good fill there of viscoelastic. Here comes the main incision. Now, I like to use the bigger FACO tip here. So that's a 2.75 millimeter wide incision, and we're going to use this purple sleeve. So a bigger incision and a slightly bigger tip. Now, here's the rexus. That's why I leave the tripan blue dye in for at least 30 seconds. You get a really great staining. And now we know, don't make a baby rexus here, right? So we're going to make this rexus at least 5 millimeters, hopefully about 5.5. Look at that, just about... Five and a quarter, maybe that one. Hydro dissect, nice and easy, slow and steady. You can't see the fluid wave because the lens is so opaque. So you don't want to go very gently here, little small aliquots at a time, because that nucleus rotating, there it goes. Now it rotates. A little more viscoelastic to protect the central corneal endothelium, just a little. Now, let's get that phaco probe out. I'm going to try to chop it. Now I'm going to show you the whole video here at two times normal speed because look at the frustration. It just doesn't want to fully chop. Maybe not enough holding power with the vacuum. Maybe the lens has that fibrous posterior plate. But what's the key here? Just to take your time. Don't be discouraged. Get behind it and there you go. So I want to trap the nucleus between the phaco tip and the chopper. And then I can exert more force. Normally in CHOP, we're just holding onto the nucleus with the vacuum holding power, which is about 400 or 500 millimeters of mercury. But in a case like this, that's not enough. So we want to trap the nuclear pieces between the two instruments, then we can exert more pressure. You can see it doesn't want to split. That posterior plate is fibrous, so we're just going to take our time here. Let's go towards the periphery. You don't have to do the central plate just yet. And we'll go around the periphery here, taking our time. Now I'm having my technician keep track of how much phaco energy is going in the eye. And you can see the successful chops are where I trap the nuclear piece between the two instruments and then I can really push it apart. And now the pieces are still stuck together. It's almost like a flower where the petals are stuck together at the hub there on that posterior plate. But again, taking our time here and we'll finally get across and finally get this separated into some bigger pieces. And again, we're just going very methodically here, step by step. Now, be sure as you're putting more ultrasonic energy in the eye, don't let the phaco probe push against the side of the incision there. That's how you'll get a phaco wound burn. So you want to have that phaco tip floating in the middle of the incision. And you notice the slightly bigger sleeve allows for more egress of fluid of BSS to help cool the tip down uh, further. So here we go. We're just about on the, the last little piece from the first heminucleus, and you've got another heminucleus in the bag. This is probably a good time to kind of re-coat that endothelium with more dispersive viscoelastic. And now look when I put it in, I aim it up towards the endothelium, just to protect that central zone. Now going back in with the phaco probe, got about half the nucleus remaining, and this is going to be a lot easier to remove. It's smaller, but even, even then, look, it's fibrous. It's going to be tougher to split. Now, with this much energy going in the eye and this much work, this is a lot of work, of course, the patient's going to have some coronal edema on post-op day one. There's just no way to avoid that. So we explain to patients ahead of time. If I was doing this patient's right eye with that moderate cataract, I could expect a clear cornea and sharp vision on post-op day one. But for this eye with this brunescent rock, the patient should not expect that. Now look at the chopper in that safe position just to make sure that the capsule doesn't come up as we get these last couple pieces out. There we go. Wow, let the light hit the retina. Finally, that retina is getting some light. And we've got some marks on the cornea, and um, those are for the toric lens that we're going to be placing this eye. We want to get that lined up. So you can already see a little bit of uh, fluid causing some edema near the inc uh, of the cornea near the incision. And again, this patient did have a little bit moderate one plus coronal edema on post-op day one. And by post-op week one, had a very clear cornea. So here's our lens going in the capsule bag. Single piece acrylic lens, monofocal lens. Aiming for a post-op goal of pretty close to Plano. And we can see 
there are some toric marks on the IOL and toric marks on the cornea. And now we're going to go behind the lens. Remember to move all that viscoelastic out of the eye. Another hint on these cases is you know there's going to be more inflammation. You know there's going to be a little bit of corneal edema. So don't further complicate that corneal edema by having a high IOP. We want this IOP to be normal, so that means no retained viscoelastic. Sealing up that main incision, just a little bit of hydration. Let's do some sweep around here. Make sure there's no retained viscoelastic on the angle. Get that toric lens nicely centered. You can see the marks on the cornea, which on your screen are the left and right sides, 3 and 9 o'clock. That's patients with the rule. There's some triamcinolone to go inside the anterior chamber, help qu quiet down any inflammation. Put a little moxifloxin on the eye at the end of the case. Checking the pressure, getting a normal pressure. Let's seal up the incisions and check that. And that was a fun case. So I showed it to you at twice normal speed. Took me about 11 minutes. You can do it too.